So good day to everybody. My name is uh, Jose Alves. And today uh, I will present uh, the topic uh, regarding modeling of ductile damage transition to fracture. Uh, this presentation will be done also with, uh, together with uh, Hassan El Bashan, who is a PhD student, who has been working with us and also under the supervision of uh, Pierre Olivier Bouchard and Daniel Pinomunas at SMEP. So uh, during this presentation, I will do uh, I will talk uh, about ductile damage and manufacturing process and why it is important to simulate it. Uh, how has we been uh, managing this process and the offers we we have uh, within Forge and uh, why we wanted to modify our current uh, state of the art. Uh, to simulate damage. And then uh, Hassan will explain uh, uh, the work he has carried during his PhD project. So uh, when talking about manufacturing of uh, solid state uh, materials, it is more often than not a synonym of a plastic forming in order to, to obtain some predefined shape. And well, when talking about uh, plasticity in metallic alloys, damage is usually unavoidable. Nonetheless, uh, damage and fracture are uh, two separate as aspects. While some amount uh, of damage can be tolerated uh, without degrading the quality of the final part, fracture means uh, that the, stru the structural integrity uh, has already been compromised and is usually visible as microscopic cracks in the part, but sometimes these cracks can be very small, or even uh, they can start in the bulk of the material, the material internally. Hence, uh, the need uh, for a proper prediction of uh, damage to fracture transition. On the other, on the other hand, uh, damage and fracture can be desired uh, in order to uh, cut or perforate sections of the material. Uh, this can be uh, in order to obtain a specific shapes or create joints. In this case, prediction of damage evolution is paramount uh, in predicting the necessary energy to be applied to the system, as well as to predict the geometrical aspect quality. Up to our latest version of Forge, damage to fracture transition was simulated using the kill element or elements erosion method because of its uh, relative algorithmic simplicity and robustness. But we uh, were aware of its limitations. Several improvements were introduced around this topic in the latest versions, mainly uh, related uh, with the uh, mesh uh, management issues after the elements to be deleted uh, were already chosen. On one hand, we work on systemic uh, repair of uh, topological pathologies that induce either thermomechanical di uh, divergences or errors during uh, remeshing operations. Another uh, big leap forward came from a mesh smoothing technique that enables catching back some of the lost mass and some of the surface quality. But once again, this is done in a posteriori manner. Uh, such developments enable simulating quite complex cases uh, with increased fidelity and sometimes even well, with uh, faster CPU times, given the better quality of the mesh. Uh, we can say all, uh, this is because there were less non-convergences uh, in the mechanics. Nonetheless, issues remain. Uh, the dependency of the crack path uh, and fracture surface on the mesh size and the fact that uh, there, uh, when doing kill elements, there's a non-physical uh, loss of uh, mass that is almost unavoidable. Uh, and as the mass is uh, lost, also the energy cannot be perfectly conserved. Another issue is that um, even when refining the mesh, uh, the smaller the elements, the larger the strength field. And uh, since uh, the damage uh, laws uh, depend on the strain normally, this implies that sometimes we cannot converge on the identification of the parameters of these uh, phenomenological laws. 
So uh, having these uh, issues in mind, uh, in 2018, we launched an internship project in order to um, start thinking of how to change or how to improve our um, mesh management uh, technique and improve the uh, damage to fracture transition uh, models. The results were so encouraging that in 2019, we launched uh, the PHC project. Uh, and so now Hassan, he will uh, present what he has done uh, in order to improve this uh, methodology. So Hassan is uh, the word uh, is to you. Thank, Thank you, you Jose. Jose. Hello everyone. My name is Hazim Dahshan. And today I'm going to show you the main developments that have uh, been realized during the past three years in my PhD. Uh, aiming that by the end of today's presentation, you will have a good understanding of the main computational tools uh, that you can use in the near future in your different applications. So I would like to start here with the main algorithm of our numerical, uh, numerical framework, which is called CIFAR. That is an abbreviation for uh, crack insertion based on the face feed model and adaptive remeshing. So from the name, we can imagine that the two building blocks of the algorithm are the uh, face feed model and adaptive remeshing tools. Here we have a general overview about the sequence of al algorithmic operations needed in our numerical strategy. So starting from the left, we, uh, we, um, we start with the phase feed computation, which is done with the help of adaptive remeshing tool in order to, uh, to refine the mesh only in the regions where the crack is expected to initiate and propagate. Uh, so the phase field that can be defined as a special, uh, special type of uh, non-local continuum damage models that have two main characteristics. The, the first characteristic is that the field is highly localized in the cracked zone. And the second characteristic is that uh, the phase field converges to a discrete crack topology with the mesh refinement uh, in what's known as uh, the gamma convergence property, which is uh, uh, very important for the consistency of the obtained numerical results. The second state, the step is the crack surface identification in which we identify the peaks or the local maxima of the phase field uh, uh, function in order to find the intersection between the crack surface and the mesh edges. The next stage is the insertion of new nodes at the identified locations. And finally, we have a nodal duplication step in order to, uh, uh, to, to split the elements that are crossed by the crack uh, in order to simulate the, uh, the crack propagation. And, and we end our computations with a, a remeshing step in order to keep uh, a good quality of the finite element mesh. So the phase feed is a continuous field that varies between zero and one, zero for the intact material and one for a fully broken material in the sense of a crack increment is inserted. So the phase feed evolution can be found by solving a partial differential equation that contains a characteristic length scale LC that controls the width of the damaged zone represented by the phase field. We also have a stress degradation function that is usually chosen under quadratic form that degrades the, uh, the stiffness of the material due to the phase field evolution. Uh, finally, we have uh, an energetic term H, which is an energy functional that contains the effect of plastic deformation and the stress state in order to derive the phase feed, uh, to drive the phase feed evolution. And here we have a coupling with the, with the stress tensor, uh, tensor through uh, the degradation of the um, stiffness uh, tensor of the material. Uh, next, we need to, uh, to have an extended model uh, for the metal forming applications uh, in which we are interested. So here we have proposed um, some, for, some new form for the energy functional H that contains, uh, that, is, that is based on uh, the, a local damage field evolution that can be used from the diverse models that are used in the industry, such as Latham Cockcroft, Rice, Tracy, et cetera, where we have introduced two model parameters, eta and day threshold. So day threshold is used to delay the crack initiation and data is used to control the post-peak stress by uh, controlling the phase field uh, evolution rate. 
So the main advantage here is that uh, our model can be directly integrated with the library of them, different damage models that exist in Forge so that it can be um, easily used by different industries. Finally, you will have a coupled system of differential equations, a momentum equation, and the phase field equation that need to be simultaneously solved in order to find uh, the crack propagation. But, so we use what's known as the staggered algorithm uh, in order to find a solution of this coupled system of equations. Next, we need to identify the crack surface starting with the uh, phase field uh, profile. So here, if we trace uh, the, the phase field profile along with its two gradient components, in-plane gradient components along the line AB, we can see that there is a unique point that, um, that, that uh, represents the peak of the phase field profile and also the, the zero, um, uh, zero value for the gradient components. And this is uh, what we call the crack intersection uh, with the mesh. So this can be mathematically re represented by defining uh, uh, a normalized distance along each ed edge in the damaged zone where uh, the problem becomes finding some critical distance, uh, omega c, uh, in which the projection of the phase field uh, on, the, uh, on the edge will be zero. And also we need to ensure that the obtained distance will give us uh, a value of the phase field that is very close to one in order to ensure that the material is fully degraded uh, when the crack is inserted. Uh, next, we, uh, I'm going to show some numerical examples that have been realized using our numerical strategy. So we start with the bar extrusion process where, uh, where uh, the initiation and propagation of internal cracks known as chevron cracks are expected uh, to take place uh, as seen in experiments where these cracks are, uh, are difficult to be visually inspected. So numerical simulation uh, help, helps us to, to get uh, a good prediction of such a phenomenon. So here we use uh, the normalized latham cockroft damage model, which is based on the maximum principal component of the stress tensor in order to derive uh, the phase field evolution because it, it, it gives a physically relevant uh, result in such an application. So here at the left, we see uh, the, uh, the phase field evolution uh, at the interior of the material where uh, chevron cracks are formed. Uh, and at the right, we see the initiation and propagation of discrete crack surfaces in 3D, uh, which is in, in a good correlation with uh, what we see in experiments. So here we have a comparison between the experimental and numerical results. Uh, and in numerical results, we compare um, the results of our algorithm of crack insertion with the element deletion method or what's known as, as a kill element in Forge. So two main observations can be made. The first observation is that the element deletion method does not enable a good prediction of the topology of, of uh, internal crack surfaces. Whereas the crack insertion algorithm gives a very uh, uh, good prediction for uh, the topology of the internal crack surfaces. The second observation is that a significant amount of volume loss can, can be also found with the element deletion me method, which is known to be dependent on the mesh size in the sense that with coarser meshes, uh, more non-physical volume loss can be expected. Uh, on the other hand, the crack insertion algorithm always keeps the volume of the material throughout the simulation. So at this point, it's important to note that in multi-stage simulations, uh, the issue of non-physical volume loss can have a, um, an enormous, enormous effect on the simulation results uh, since the product of each stage will, uh, will, will affect the mechanical performance in the next stages and hence the, final product, the quality of the final product. So that in the next example, we will show a multi-stage process where we have here a complete industrial chain uh, taken with courtesy of uh, Tsubakimoto chain cooperation, where we have three consecutive stages, starting with a blanking stage, uh, followed by a piercing stage, and finally a bending, uh, a 90 degrees bending stage of the, of the final product. Uh, so here, the, the main objective is to show the ability of our numerical strategy to, uh, to model the, um, uh, the, the, the output of each in fabrication uh, stage in order to, to show the advantages and the quality of obtained products. 
So here we start with the first blanking stage. So as you can see uh, at the left, uh, the, um, the initiation and propagation of real crack surfaces can be accurately captured uh, with our model, where a perfect contact between the workpiece and, um, uh, and, and the original piece can be expected at the sheared surfaces. And here at the right, we have uh, we we can see the crack initiation and propagation uh, through a cross section uh, in the, at the interior of the material. But also we can see that the model is able to perfectly uh, predict the uh, the, um, the crack propagation uh, process, where all the characteristic features such as the formation of bars can be accurately captured. Here we have a comparison between the CIFAR and element deletion algorithms. Uh, where we have used the same element size for both simulations. So we can see that the main observation is that with the SIFAR algorithm, all the material extensions known as bars and the, the characteristic surface features of the sheared uh, part can be accurately captured. Whereas with the element deletion method, all these features are, are deleted um, during the simulation uh, so that they, are not, uh, they cannot be captured. Uh, here we have uh, we have a comparison between both algorithms in terms of CPU computation time, where we can see that uh, um, the the progress of computation time for both algorithms is very similar, with a, with a slight advantage uh, for the SIPFAR algorithms that had uh, um, a decreased computational time, which can be related to the quality of the obtained finite mesh uh, that uh, that um, affects the convergence rate of the algorithm. Next, we have the piercing stage, where we also have a comparison between the uh, SIP4 and element deletion algorithms. So here, two main observations can be also uh, made. The first observation is that the quality of sheared surfaces with the SIP4 algorithm is much more better than the element deletion algorithm. And the second observation is that with the element deletion algorithm, we can see that there is a gap between the sheared surface and the punch, which is related to the deletion of elements in this zone. And, uh, which is known to be non-physical, and uh, it can be also expected that it will increase with the increase of element size. Whereas with the SIPFAR algorithm, we can see a perfect contact between the two surfaces, which is something that we expect to see in experiments. Finally, we have the bending stage. Uh, so here, the main observation for the element deletion algorithm that um, the bending line, uh, the, the critical damage value is reached on the whole bending line. On the other hand, for the SIPFAR algorithm, we can only see two tiny uh, locations at the, the right and left boundaries of the bending line that uh, develop uh, the critical damage value uh, so that uh, tiny cracks are expected to initiate at these locations. And this is uh, confirmed also experimentally where we can see uh, the, um, the same cracking pattern uh, that, uh, that has been predicted with the SIPFAR algorithm. Finally, we, uh, we have uh, the, some conclusions and perspectives. So the first uh, conclusion is that initiation, propagation, merging, and the branching of complex crack paths can be uh, accurately predicted with uh, the phase feed mo model. Uh, next, uh, our crack insertion strategy uh, has succeeded to, uh, to, uh, to insert real cracks in the material. Uh, by cutting the elements rather than killing them or deleting them from the mesh. And finally, our crack insertion strategy has been implemented uh, within a fully parallel numerical framework, which is important for the lar large scale industrial applications. We have here some perspectives. So first, uh, experimental calibration of the model parameters are, um, is important in order to have physically relevant uh, mechanical uh, or, or physical behavior of the, um, from the model. Next, we also need to uh, modify, uh, to, uh, to add or to develop more accurate uh, techniques for the face field gradient smoothness in order to have a better description of the uh, identified crack surfaces. And I would like to end my presentation with this animation where we have a cube uh, filled with random holes uh, subjected to uh, complex loading conditions where we can see that our algorithm is able to predict uh, complex uh, initiations uh, and propagation of crack surfaces where we can see uh, there is a merging between different branches leading to the final uh, failure of the material. Um, 
So uh, I would like to end my presentation now and thank you very much for your listening. So well, thank you very much, uh, Hassan. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks to the public for listening. So if you have uh, questions, we'll be happy to uh, answer.